My name is Camille Roberta Balestieri. I'm a cisgender black lesbian woman, Brazilian. My pronouns are she slash her. I'm a former researcher interested in gender technologies that shape the diversity of experiences of Brazilian women. I always taking the scars of colonialism and almost 400 years of slavery into account. Scars that denounce the violence of the racist slash cis heteronormative patriarchal legacy here in Brazil. So right now I'm working as Taliria Petrones parliamentary advisor. She's a black congresswoman from the state of Rio who was a really close friend of Marielle Franco and the Rio's councilwoman murdered black in, back in 2018. I'm pretty sure that Taliria, my boss, greets you all and I'm honored to, do, to join the team of a politician that addresses the struggles of black women in the federal Congress here in Brazil. Uh, I understand that the environmental racism is one of the manifestation of this legacy, maybe the most dangerous, considering the magnitude of its consequences for racialized folks all over the earth especially in countries and territories invaded and stolen by greed and hate of the so-called countries of the global north, a phenomena that we may know as colonialism and imperialism in history books. Racialized women are the most affected and also the protagonists of the struggles for climate justice. I consider myself more of a restless, curious person than a climate activists. Actually, there are more powerful and brave people who are engaged in these struggles, in struggles here in Brazil. And if in, in the one hand, I assume my limitation, in the other hand, I make myself available to build bridges in spaces where many of these activists cannot reach. I guess this is my task. Okay, so until this point, I guess I made my introduction. <laughs> I believe all of us in this chat are aware in some level what colonialism, environmental racism, and climate justice mean. I also believe all of us are willing to hold ourselves accountable in our personal actions and activism, despite of all the different challenges that each one faces in their territory and with their identity. If I'm wrong and someone here still doesn't feel uneasy enough, I hope that my participation in this conversation can sweet as an invitation. So I've been teased with a question. Does the 13th recommendation framework support how you understand and practice resistance to colonial legacies and how you engage and carry out your work. So I'll try to address this question from the understanding of my task of being bridges, okay? Um, I've read about the thirteen framework in your website. And first of all, I really like the slogan, act local, think global. It reminds me a lot of the book, Feminist Theory from Margin to Center, written by the deceased intellectual bell hooks who passed last year. Being very reductionist, this is London sums up Bell's invitation to reflect and reveal the feminist practice, shifting power from racially privileged groups to finally build a practice that reflects the struggles and experiences of Black, Latina, and non-cis um, non heterosexual women. I'm sorry. Before I continue to develop my speech, I must tell you, I really like the meanings that you've brought to the number 30. And maybe add one or two more significances grounded in my Brazilian roots. First of all, for many Brazilian folks, the number 13 means bad luck. <laughs> when a Friday happens to occur on the 13th day of the month, we all expect for bad events. Maybe too influenced by the American horror movies? Sure. 
but I did a little research to find the origins of this myth, uh, which can relate to Nordic and Christian cultures. I will stick to the Christian origin, okay? Jesus, who was a black Afro-Asian revolutionary, was betrayed on the 13th. And before being crucified, he held a dinner with 13 participants, okay? Uh, well, coincidentally or not, the Brazilian black population was also betrayed on the 13th by Princess Isabel. Uh, daughter of Dom Pedro II, Emperor of Brazil back then. On May 13th of 1888, a Sunday, not a Friday, according to my research, <laughs> Isabel signed the law that enacted the abolition of slavery in Brazil. However, this law did not guarantee any kind of reparation or support to the Black population, who was left to their own luck. If we've, been, if we've been betrayed on the 13th, May 14th, the day after, ushered a new era of resistance in Brazil. Okay, as I'm finished with my proposals of meanings to the number 13 that you may or may not take, uh, I, I wish you do. <laughs> uh, I may go back to your provocation. Uh, I see the third framework as a step towards building and environmentalism. This word's very hard for me, environmentalism. Uh, from the merging to the center, inspired by the traditions of the collective struggles, as well as a movement of problematization of the whiteness being the protagonist of environmental debates. Again, this word is very hard for me. <laughs> so, by the way, aren't you white people the creators and beneficiaries of this racist and sexist economic model of exploitation of the land and bodies? How dare you try to be the heroes of the planet you vilified in the name of accumulating wealth and power? How dare you to look into our eyes, eyes of the descendants of those who were kidnapped from their motherland, descendants of women who have been raped by your ancestors, and play the nice guys who are going to save the planet that you broke. How dare you? Shame on you. So I wrote these lines these last few lines very passionately. And I realize it might, it might sound aggressive. But I assure you, the discomforts, discomfort that my words cause will never be nor a millimeter close to the pain colonialism has induced to our bodies and generations throughout the centuries. Malcolm Hex has taught us to never mistake the reaction of the oppressed with the violence of the oppressor. The asserting recommendation says, there can be no climate justice without addressing the international impact of actions on a local level. However, if we want to go further and truly commit ourselves to find it, to fighting the climate disaster and save this planet, we need to radicalize our discourses and practices. We do not have time to close the doors agreements between the world's leaders, mostly white cisgender men, to negotiate changes that ensure the continuity of capitalism. We don't have time. Our planet, the whole humanity can take it. Isn't it deathly bizarre that we seem closer to the end of the earth than to the end of this economic model. So the world can't stand another day certain things because we might not have the day after. So I invite you, who's with, who's with me in this task of building bridges and radicalizing our practices and discourses? I'm done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amazing, thank you. 
uh, as fiery as as anticipated. <laughs> For those of you who had the pleasure of seeing Camille last year, or maybe the year before, can't quite remember. Um, I th I've heard it was equally as as ferocious, but I, I'm afraid I wasn't there. Um, I w maybe wanted to ask you: um, Could you talk a bit more specifically about about the work that you have been doing in Brazil? Because you've touched on that you've been working with your this parliamentary advisor, um, but I know you've also been doing kind of labour rights stuff and um, and other other interesting things. So do you maybe want to touch on some of your some of your work? Okay. Uh, so should I answer for you now, or should I yeah, yeah, yeah. So we still we still have eight minutes of this section. Okay. And then, and then the other speaker so, will speak, and then we'll do questions. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, so I, as I said, I consider myself more of a really curious person than an activist. Uh, actually, I'm kind of ashamed of saying I'm an activist because I'm really close to people who are really in the front line, you know, doing the hard work. And I, I rather step back <laughs> and say, okay, I'm supporting you guys, I'm studying. But uh, I started my activism uh, 10 years ago uh, as a student in the university, uh, struggling for the public universal uh, education here in Brazil. And then I founded this collective called Mariela Serra de Moura when uh, Slut Walk came to Brazil, but it was just too white for me. And when we, when I entered my master's in Juiz de Fora in the state of Minas Gerais, I got in touch with black young women uh, who were doing their activism uh, by denunciating racism in the university, also in the city, and by um, looking after uh, the application of some laws that ensure the teaching of the history of Africa and African religions in the schools in Brazil. And I came to Niterói. Niterói is a city nearby Rio uh, in 2017. And I, I haven't done much here <laughs> actually, but my ex-wife, she works in Criola, which is an NGO. I guess you you have been with her. She's Leah Manso. So I was around Leah, and Leah is very committed to the struggles of black women. So I learned a lot. I got in touch with all these amazing leaders and activists here in Brazil, such as Lucia Xavier and Jurema Vernac from the International Amnesty. And right now I'm working with Taliria Petroni. Uh, she's a Congresswoman and she's also from the Detroit. She was really close to Marielle Franco and um, in her team doing the communication. And in the same time that it represents a place of privilege because we feel really close to the power of being the Congress. Uh, we have just a few Congress people who are really committed to the black population here in Brazil. So it seems like we never rest, we can never rest. We never stop working. Uh, and I don't know if you were following the newspapers, following the news here in Brazil, but we are having the consequences of the climate changes. Uh, and this year we had like several tragedies in Petropolis, in the south of Bahia, last week in Pernambuco. 
this week in Alagoas. And we all know that black women are the most affected because uh, black women are the, they support whole families and whole communities. And when tragedies happen, it means that we are going to have like more and more work to do. Uh, last week, also here in Rio, we have um, the killing of 25 people in a favela called Vila Cruzeiro, Vila Cruzeiro by the military police. And this is a, a decisive year because we're having the elections from for president and also the elections for Congress and also for governors, state governors here in Brazil. Uh, and we are facing, as in Europe, the, the raising of racism. We have Bolsonaro as a pres president and right now he is like, acting like Trump, like Donald Trump of, uh, he's trying to uh, put uh, another state coup, coup if he does not win the election. So right now here in Brazil, we're having a really hard time with fascism, with, hate groups and yeah working with this congress woman who has been uh threatened by the paramilitary groups paramilitary groups that we all know that support bolsonaro uh actually here in Britain,